and a very good morning to you. It's Monday the 14th of August 2017. A very, very special day today, boys and girls, uh, because it's 50 years, 50 years since Pirate Radio finished. Now, there is a very, very special uh, Pirate Radio day held on uh, m m my friend's radio station. He runs a radio station in Slovakia, uh, Eric Wiltshire. And uh, if you want to hear old pirate-type stuff, not pirate as in, hey, hey, my gym lad, you know, 60s-type music, and just generally the way programmes were presented. Um, I, I like to think that I do it in the same sort of way where, you know, a friend at the end of the radio, rather than the DJs talking at you, which is exactly what they do now, I'm afraid. There's, there's not a lot of personality, I don't think, on commercial radio stations. These blokes used to entertain you. Great people like, uh, like Tony Blackburn, Dave Lee, Travis, all that lot, you know. Now, there's a special day, Dave Cash, of course, who I worked with uh, for a while at Liberty Radio. We lost him. Um, I think it was at the end of last year, beginning of this year time, the great Dave Cash. But uh, if you want to hear how it was all done, then uh, pop over to www.rti.fm, OK? And you can hear uh, Offshore Radio Day on that station today, OK? So once again, that's www.rti.fm. Uh, there's all sorts of other bits and pieces going on as well uh, on the Radio Caroline website this morning. It says, at midnight on August the 14th, 1967, the Marine Broadcasting Offences Bill came into force, which silenced many of the pirate radio stations broadcasting from ships and forts off the coast of Essex. Of course, I was around at that time. I would have been five, I think, six, three, four, five, six, seven, four. I would have been four at the time, so I'm you know, not really aware of what was going on. But um, there's a couple of programmes uh, I've seen on the television, and indeed a film, uh, Rock the Boat or something like that, which gives you an idea on, 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 on how it was. And it does look, it does look an awful lot of fun, both broadcasting and listening to those radio stations of the time. Uh, the story again on the Radio Caroline website this morning says Radio Caroline, however, defied the law and carried on broadcasting. Today, the last illegal pirate ship, Radio Caroline's Ross Revenge, that's today, as in now, is anchored in the River Blackwater. And to commemorate the 50th anniversary of that historic weekend, we're offering nostalgic-themed cruises from Bright Sea out to see the ship. It, and it goes on. Relieve, re, not relieve, relive the swinging 60s by dressing up and enjoying the music and radio station sounds of the time. As we sail down the Wither Colne and out to the Ross Revenge, we have arranged a two-hour guided tour of the ship after lunch as part of the day, including watching a live broadcast Join Thistle's costume hospitality crew as they serve you drinks and snacks from the period. And remember the days when your favourite pirate DJs waved the rules and ruled the waves. So that's on the Radio Caroline. So they're doing something as well. Not only that, but our good old BBC is at it as well, boys and girls, celebrating this big event, of course, because this is also when Radio 1 started, BBC Radio 1. And... Um, on the uh, BBC website this morning, uh, BBC Radio 1 revealed plans. Oh, is this, this, is this, I thought this was now. Hang on a minute, I might have the date wrong here. <laughs> um, let's see. No, it's, this is not till September. Radio 1 Vintage will kick off in September. And it says BBC Radio 1 today reveals plans for a three-day digital radio station to mark Radio 1's 50th birthday, featuring 50 one-hour themed nostalgic shows made from Radio 1's archive material from DJs across its entire history. It will celebrate the pivotal role that Radio 1 has played in music, entertainment and popular culture since its launch in 1967. And the uh, uh, John John Peel, Noel Edmonds, Janice Long, Jackie Brambles, Dave Pierce, Kenny Everett. Oh, wow. Uh, Johnny Walker, Tommy Vance, Kevin Greedin, Bobby and Nath Naho. I don't know them. Mike Reed, Ed Stewart, of course. Junior Choice, do you remember that? Da 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 da. We used to have that on in cub camps and scout camps every single morning. We'd get up. I can't, we used to get up early when we were camping in the scouts. I don't know, maybe about eight o'clock, half past seven, eight o'clock. Uh, we had a great uh, cub leader. Or scout leader, rather. Uh, uh, my cub leader was Denny Ives. 
who is probably gone now. Uh, he was a wonderful man. Uh, my scout leader was Ted Morden. He was fantastic. Ted Morden, who we lost a few years ago, actually. No one told him. We didn't know. You know, I would love to have gone to his funeral. He was a great man, Ted Morden. Really dedicated to the boys, I tell you. Really, really great man he was. And uh, his wife. Um, I went to see them a few years ago. And shortly after that, he passed on, which was a great shame. Uh, but we had uh, Junior Choice on and Radio 1 on all the time when we were scout camping. Bl literally blaring out. The one song that takes me back to to scout camps and things like that is John Paul Young's Loving in, Love is in the Air. Actually, there were two. That, that one was... Uh, no, and the other one was Mull of Kentai. Remember that? Mull of Kentai. That one. And it was just on and on and on for weeks and weeks. I think that was number one in the charts for ever such a long time, maybe a couple of months even. And it was just on the radio. Every hour we would hear this tune and we'd all be singing. And uh, the other one, Love is in the Air, which I kept hearing uh, on the radio as well. Happy, happy times in the Scouts. So a lot of DJs there. Tony Blackburn's going to do some stuff as well. And uh, that's in September on the... Uh, did I say the 30th? I can't remember when now. When, when was it now? Um, uh, here we are. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, f f I think it's from the 30th of September. Let's have a look there. We got that. I'm sure I I'm sure I saw it. Oh no. Uh no, that's something else. Isn't it? I it's, it's I'm sure it's sometime in September. Um it's a bit bit complicated, the dates. There's all sorts of things they're doing and different dates. It's not clear. Oh, hang on. Radio One Vintage will kick off on Saturday, the 30th of September 2017, exactly 50 years to the day since uh, Radio One launched. And Radio One is really only there. Because of um, all the pirates going, you see, they, they pushed them off and they kind of replaced the pirates, which uh, was a great shame there, really. Uh, let's say hello to some early people who are with us on the show this morning. A very good morning to you, boys and girls. If you're there early, I'm here early today. And there's a reason I'm early. I'll tell you later. Uh, Diane, uh, good morning, Diane. Uh, Rod Brown, uh, SOS. Gregorian, who's going to come along to the uh, karaoke night uh, one Monday, aren't you, sir? Um, he was asking me about disabled access, uh, people in wheelchairs, crutches, that sort of thing. Well, uh, Central Station is at floor level. I think there is one step up into the venue for which there is a ramp available if you've got a wheelchair, OK? Then you're in. To get onto the stage, it's three steps. But when you're doing karaoke... Doesn't matter. You don't need to be on the stage. If you want to do it, do it from your table. If you can't get onto the stage, no problem at all. I can bring the microphone to you. All right. So everyone's welcome always. Uh, all right. SOS Gregoria. Uh, good morning to the lovely Carsten. Good morning. Uh, who's uh, probably in Germany, I would guess. I've worked with Carsten for a while in the Black Cap in Camden Town. That's some years ago now, isn't it, my friend? Some years ago. A very good morning to you, sir. Yes. Lovely to see your face. Uh, Simon Good. Good morning to Simon Good. Who says, a bit of sad news for Barry fans. Joseph Bologna, Rico, in the Copacabana movie, died on Sunday uh, of the dreaded Big C. Now, I, I haven't seen that yet. I've got the DVD, which uh, I think Ray Reynolds kindly gave me a few months ago. I've actually got a stack of DVDs that uh, that Ray... Lovely... Oh, I can't get... This, this blooming... Oh, just a minute. The carpet's come up now. Oh. I've got a carpet on a carpet, and the damn thing keeps coming up, doesn't it? Pull that down. And then, if the see, the carpet kind of folds up, and then my wheels get stuck. <laughs> that will not happen to you in Central Station if you're in a wheelchair, by the way. OK? Because <laughs> we don't have carpet. We can't afford carpets in there, my love. Not with the amount of drink that gets spilt on the floor. Yes, uh, Ray Reynolds... I, Kindly, over the last few years, it could be stacks and stacks of DVDs. And there's a big pile of them, and I haven't watched any of them. Not a single one. It's all about time, so I hope to watch that at some point. Uh, the Copacabana. Thank you, Simon. Uh, good morning to Tony Cornish. Good morning, Tony. Um, he's the son of a lovely lady, Kath Cornish, who used to write the show uh, regularly. And uh, we lost her uh, uh, a couple of years ago now. So good morning to you. Always remember your mum, Tony. She she sent... I've got one of her letters here somewhere. I, I, I kept it. It's a card. Here it is. Here it is here. Look, Tony. Just to show you I'm not BSing you. All right. There's a couple of special people. 
Special people, just someone I've never met. And this was from Kath. Uh, 2011. Gosh, 2011, that there you are. There's your mum's handwriting, see? Oh, see that there? Oh, it doesn't matter. She's not living there anymore, is she? There we are. And uh, as I say, we lost her a few years ago. So don't I do keep stuff. Uh, it's not really possible to keep everything, unfortunately. Uh, items sometimes have to be moved out because you just get more and more of them. Uh, but often people are always bringing me in little gifts uh, to Central Station and things like that. And it's, it's lovely. It's lovely to be thought of like that. It really is. And your mum was very, very special to me, the way she used to write those letters in. I think once, once she sent me, I think she sent me three, three cards going forwards so there would be one perhaps for my birthday in a couple of weeks and she also sent a christmas card and another birthday card later on so i i don't know if it, it, it probably at that point she thought there was something wrong and she was getting some more cards in which is a lovely thought so good morning to you tony welcome to the show all right uh shania's there good morning shania on the isle of Wight. eric's there good morning eric just mentioning your um your program there uh, i don't know if you want to call in about that eric i can hang on let me just open Open my phone line by clicking buttons, and that will open. There we go. There you go, Eric. If you I don't know if you want to call in about your um, uh, radio station offshore music stuff before the numbers up there, 02081443477. If not, that's okay as well. Uh, good morning to Jody Griffin, who joins us this morning. Good morning, Jody. Whereabouts are you, my darling? You're a new viewer, aren't you? Nice to have new people along. Morning, Jody. Uh, Mary, non-Irish Mary from Ireland is with us this morning, who says, uh, got stuck last night. Hilarious. Mary came along to the karaoke last night. We have karaoke every Sunday uh, at the Camden Eye, which is in Camden Town, 8 to 11 every Sunday night. And uh, we got a little stage there. Mary came in her stilettos and the back part of the stiletto disappeared into the stage. <laughs> And she literally got stuck on the spot. <laughs> Poor Mary, I feel sorry for you, darling. Hey, well that stopped. That slowed you down a bit, hasn't it? Hey. <laughs> Good morning, Mary. Welcome to our little show this morning. Uh, morning to Michael Doan. Morning, Michael. Uh, Wayne is there. Good morning, Wayne. And John Aitken says, "Morning, Mulligan. I spent nine weeks. I knew it was a few months. Gosh, that's nearly three weeks. Nine weeks at number one." On the 1st of November, 77 to January, 78. So 77, I was 66, 73, something like that. So I was 14 years old now. And yes, I remember that 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 song. I would have been at Buckmore Park. Uh, Scout, no, was I at Buckmore Park? November to January. Yeah, I must have been in February, 78. So I probably wasn't number one at the time. But they kept playing it. And it was a long, it's a long song. Maybe you don't know it. Look it up when you finish, when we finish the show today, okay? Mull of Kintyre. Mull of Kintyre. With bagpipes and everything. Fantastic song by Paul McCartney. Um, uh, and Wings, of course. So that was very nice. I had a nice day yesterday, boys and girls. Um, I got up as usual on a Sunday. I set the alarm for 7.30. Went to church, cycled to church, and Vivian was was there. And she said, where were you last week? Because I wasn't there last week. I went to a different church last week. I went to a different church last week uh, because I'd been getting getting very tired during the daytime. Setting the alarm at 7.30. Now, I don't usually get up that early. But nevertheless, so I thought I'd, I'd leave it last week, and I didn't get up until later. But I went to another church, and actually, uh, there was no singing. It was a bit... <laughs> You know, I mean, you shouldn't really go to church for singing, but I like to have a good sing, you know, praise my soul, the king and all that business. Yes. So I went back to my church. So I told her I went to another one last week and she was telling me, Vivian, uh, that um, her uh, granddaughter is in a production at the moment of Les Miserables. And she's very, very pleased with Les Miserables. I did say this on the show yesterday, actually. And uh, she's been keep going to see her. And I said, oh, it reminds me of being in the nativity. I was in the nativity at school. She said, oh, were you? I said, yes, I played Mary. <laughs> Which amused her very much. In the middle of mass, dear. She was trying to hide her little face like that. So did that yesterday. Uh, came back and I cleaned the living room carpet yesterday. You remember I've got my vax back out. Good morning, Mary. Mary said Mull of Kintyre drove, that, drove her mad, that song. It did go on a bit, didn't it, Mary? I did get fed up with it after a while, 
but it was a good song. It must be very clever to play the bagpipes, don't you think? I would imagine that's a difficult instrument to play. You're all up there in Scotland. Have you ever tried to get a bagpiper on New Year's Eve? Oh, dear. That cost you an arm and a leg, that was. During, during the rest of the year, you can get a bagpiper for about £5.50. New Year's Eve, you're looking at two grand. Easy. Because they only work one night a year. It's the only night they want it, isn't it? Poor bad pipers. That's worse than a zero-hour contract, isn't it, that one? Cool, blimey, yeah. Top of the Pops every week. Oh, Mull of Kentucky. Top of the Pops. da 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 so I came back here and I cleaned the living room carpet with my Vax. Now that uh, was a lot dirtier than the carpet up here. Because you remember I did the hallway carpet last week, which was, I mean, the, the water was a bit cloudy, but it wasn't too bad, to be honest. The living room carpet, water come out black, absolutely black. But like on the stairs, now on the stairs, I had a couple of, I had a tea stain on the stair. Next one down from the top. And I, I've i tried all sorts, rubbing with spray stuff. And I, I mean, it's, it's, it's all, it always looks a bit odd to me, really. You know, you're, you're, you spray this stuff on. You're supposed to do circles with it and then dab it with a clean cloth. It doesn't work. What you need is a Vax. This thing pumps the foam in and then sucks the dirt out. And it's got rid of that stain that I thought I was going to have to get a new carpet. Because I can't bear a stain on a carpet, especially it's a beige one, you know. So it's obvious every time you go up there, it's really obvious that it's there. So I did the stairs last week and, uh, and that wasn't really that dirty, the water. Living room carpet, uh, did, it was black. I did put a little bit too much of that cleaner in and the uh, uh, the collection tank, it's an upright thing. It looks like a large upright hoover, this, this fax machine and the little... Tank is kind of on the top of the bottom of it. If you, if you, you know, you know the bit that's on the floor, like the flat bit, where it goes like that, and that's like a water tank that collects all the dirty, disgusting water, and that that kept filling up with foam. So, I, so I, I then poured the, I emptied it down the toilet, because now and again you have to empty the tank. You see, emptied it down the toilet, and then I foolishly flushed a chain, and all the foam came out. <laughs> I've got sparkling toilets here at the Royal Mirable Studios. I'm telling you that now. So I did the carpets yesterday. Let's just say a quick hello to uh, Chris Bedwell. Good morning, Chris. It's Sam and I's wedding anniversary today. Seven years. Happy anniversary to, to, to you too as well. Okay? Happy anniversary. Well, um, Adam's at work. And I'm waiting for a new sofa to arrive. You're celebrating your wedding with a new sofa, are you? Your wedding anniversary. Is that her wedding gift to you? Or at least you get you get some use out of it. That's the trouble, isn't it? When you buy women... What that, why, isn't, why isn't that going off? One minute. That's it. <laughs> when, you buy, when you buy ladies flowers and chocolates, you don't really get use out of it. So very, very good thinking, Chris. You've got a sofa so that you're, at least you'll spend the money and you'll get something out of it as well. I like your thinking, sir. I like your thinking. We had a day out yesterday, went up to the O2, the walkway across the road, and then went to the Star Wars Identities Exhibition. Uh, really interesting with some of the original costumes, props and concept artwork from the films. Yes, yeah, Star Wars, very popular. I didn't get into Star Wars, Chris. I was Star Trek. I like Star Trek. His new Star Trek series, I think it's September or November, uh, only on Netflix. Uh, to start with, okay, so st I think it's Star Trek, coming to Netflix soon, brand new series, yes, uh, Sa is it Sam or Adam, Sam's at work, oh, I beg your pardon, Sam's at work, who's Adam then, is that your son, is Adam your son, I'm getting very confused Chris, very confusing messages coming from you, morning Christina, who's with us this morning, that's nice, look, Mary's wishing you happy anniversary as well, and Shania's got to go to work, so chop chop Shania, Come on, get to work and pick up from where we left off, dear. You'll have to fast forward about 20 minutes to get to this point again, OK? There you go. So I've done the living room talk, uh, carpet. Um, then I watched uh, a, a film, The Peacemaker. Has anyone seen that? Which is very good. It's got that George Clooney in it. Now, George Clooney... I don't fancy him, but a lot of the ladies fancy George Clooney. 
And it's about um, Russians and someone nicks a nuclear bomb to use as terrorists. It's all it's very, very good. And there was some beautiful music in it. And I kept Shazam in the film where this bit of music was in it. And I could not, and it would not come up. You know, it comes up as a, not not recognised. Oh, Adam was a typo, was it? Do try and type correctly, Chris. You might be good at photographs, dear, but you're clearly not good on the computer keyboard, are you? Are you a keyboard warrior? <laughs> Do you like keyboard warriors? Oh, aren't they sad, lonely individuals? Keyboard warriors. They're people that sit behind keyboards and just offend everyone by typing them stuff. You know. Usually, Mary, I have to say Labour voters. There's a lot of... <laughs> There's a lot of Labour voters who hide behind that keyboard. And if you don't agree with what they want, then you are evil and you must die. <laughs> hard left. Are you hard left, Mary? <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm listening to this music and I have to wait eventually for the film to finish and the credits came round at the end. And it was Chopin. And it was the most beautiful piece of music. And it was, it's sad. It's sad. And it was Chopin. It was either Chopin, Nocturne, um, in either C or F minor, I think it was. So I immediately went on to my, I've started buying a lot of classical music for some reason. I immediately went on to my Apple store and purchased um, Chopin Nocturnes. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there's quite a lot of different nocturnes that, that he'd done. And I managed to get that one as as well as many others. And um, I was playing it in the car last night on the way back from, from work. And it's very, very relaxing. I've started listening to a lot of classical music. I've noticed that. Wonderful, wonderful pieces. Uh, not uh, like little sad things like the Chopin nocturnes. And also big, big things like last night of the prom staff stuff, you know. Da, 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 and that seafaring one, you know, the seafaring. That one. I love it. So we're getting into classical music at the moment. And I'm a great fan of Chopin, it, it turns out. Love all that piano going on. Uh, Chris says, is that a new picture behind you? Yes. Yeah, I've got, um, I've got quite a few pictures and I rotate them. Give someone something nicer to look at rather than myself all the time. <laughs> and that, that's a little little orchid. Now, uh, Maureen bought me that. Look at that. That's the only one that's still going at the moment. We had a, I think it was Timothy, actually. Uh, Timothy, who I'm I, I asking about my orchids that they weren't flowering. And he is an orchid doctor. And he told me to trim them down a bit. So I've done that on the other ones on the windowsill and we'll see if they come back up again, um, which uh, uh, which I hope they do. Good morning to Adam the Plumber. Morning, Adam. Hope you're well this morning. So more classical music being downloaded. To this morning, I've downloaded a Last Night of the Proms album. Um, I downloaded a Mozart Requiem, which was quite nice. And they're only about five, five, six pounds each time when you download this stuff. And it's all—it's quite easy on your Apple iPhone as well and all that. Christina loves the BBC proms. Oh, yes, I have recorded most of the last seasons. Oh, really? OK. OK, I'd love to go to uh, last night of the proms. I'd love to go to that one. Wow. I'd have to be at the front, you know, waving my Union Jack and all that business. Da, 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 da. Yes, indeed. Thank you. I noticed some of you were sharing the programme on your walls this morning, uh, as you always do. So much appreciated. And thank you very much for sharing the programme on your wall as uh, we go out today. Um, so I had my classical music, downloaded that, had a bit of lunch, went to bed for a while. Um, went to the karaoke last night. As I say, Cam's and I karaoke every Sunday, 8 till 11 o'clock. Nice night last night. Um, Lady P, Lady Phoenix was there and her lovely husband, uh, David. And they really are a lovely couple. They really do lock right together, those two. And uh, they brought a load of friends in with them as well, which was quite nice. I can't remember their names now, but they were lovely people sitting on the table um, over there. Mary popped along last night and Steve uh, was there. Uh, who have become kind of Sunday night regulars. Steve is Steve is there almost every week now. And uh, Mary comes, I think, most weeks to a Sunday, didn't you, darling? Adam says you should have Apple Music if you're downloading. It's £9 a month. £9 a month, dear? Oh, no. 
No, we're not having any of these monthly subscriptions. It's bad enough for the broadband. Monthly, what monthly subscriptions have I got? Oh, let me refer now to my, to my money list. One moment, please. I've got a money list here. Regular outgoings. Look at this. Regular outgoings on here. I won't read you my mortgage things, but look, look, look at all these monthly, every month. Bracknell Forest Council, £84, dear. To empty the bloody bins. Eight, I can do it myself. £84 to empty the bins. And they've put up, they've put up. Now, I did say I quite liked them last week. We've got new LED. Oh, good morning to William Coughlin. Oh, how are you, sir? How I am privileged to be in your presence this morning, William. Wow. Are you in are you in Spain at the moment? I think you've had a little little do in a hospital or something, haven't you, at the moment? And the lovely Kitty Litter is in the house this morning. Kitty Litter reigns forever. Yes. <laughs> anyway, Bracknell Council, look at this, 84 quid. Um, what else have I got? Three telephone organization. You might my three phone. Thirty pound a month. Did I say a week? It is a month. A month. Look, look. Spotify, five pounds. Um uh, a month. What else have I got here? Uh, British Gas, £23.20 a month. And then there's the car. I don't dare tell you what that is. Green Network Energy, £49 a month. And then there's the broadband, which is nearly £50 a month. I only have broadband. Now, you may think that that's quite dear, £50 a month for broadband. And that's all I have, broadband, and uh, I've got a landline thing there as well. But I don't think I get charged for that. Uh, it, it's £50 a month because I got very, very fast. I've got 300 meg down and 220 meg up. And I, 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 the reason I've got that is to do these shows, literally. It's the only reason I've got that, so you don't get interrupted and cut off and, and bu 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 buffering that little circle. If you get the circle going around, it's probably you. Often people say, oh, can't see you this morning. So there we are. I'm very well, William. I am I'm I feel, feel very privileged to be in your company today, dear. As, as the, how's the health going? Do let us know. Eh? All right. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, Mark was there last night as well. Mark comes kind of every other Sunday. Mark comes. Uh, Mark is uh, Mark is uh, uh, was been to my karaoke's for years and years. Uh, he's a nice chap and he's got a wonderful voice. Um, he does all sorts of music, but I think he's he's probably best at the rock things, the the heavy rock things. And one of his things he does. I, did he do no? He didn't do highway. To, did he do highway to hell last night? ACDC, Highway to Hell. Da, da. It's, it's, it's very rock in there. Ro I said rock with an R, my dear. Do pay full attention. Rock. And he did Guns N' Roses. Um, which Guns N' Roses was it? Da, 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 all night long. Da, 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 da. da. Was it that one? I think that was the one. So Mark was there last night. Uh, drove home. Very good drive home last night. Except some idiot at the beginning of the M4. OK, so coming on to the N4, it's M4. It's a 40 mile an hour limit uh, across this um, uh, Hammersmith flyover thing. OK, and as you come down, you know, it's still 40 and then it goes to 70. Now, there is a camera right at the very end of that 40. So you do not speed up until you've gone past the national speed limit sign, which which is 70. So this, this car is driving along. Right? So and um, and they, they've got the average speed cameras along there as well. So you cannot speed up anywhere along that section. Not worth the risk, although people do. You know, I do wonder if these people get tickets or not while they're on that section going mad. Anyway. So um, so we've gone past the national speed limit and I'm behind him in the inside lane. You know, I don't go too fast. I'm quite happy to sit in the motorway about 55, 60 mile an hour. Honestly, I, that's true. That is on the inside lane. So we're getting there now uh, and we're carrying on. And now he's still doing 40 and we've gone past the good morning, Saba. There's Saba joining us this morning. Morning, Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Uh, so we've gone past that national speed limit. So I thought, right, I'll go a bit faster now. I've got my little foot down. And uh, no, he's still doing 40. And get, I'm getting closer and closer. He's still doing 40. And we're quite far now past the national speed limit thing. 
Uh, so I then pull out into the middle lane and I'm getting close. And then he puts his foot down. You know, oh, he wants a race, does he? And he's got a little Vauxhall. A little bit of Vauxhall. I never look at another car. I rarely look into another car. If someone's cut me up, I just keep my eyes ahead because it's not worth road rage. Not worth road rage. Not worth it. Okay, you want to go faster? Go. That's it. I'll let him go. No problem at all. I'll pull over. All right? But this idiot, I thought, oh, yeah. So now he's put his foot down. So I, I've, I've what, you know, I'm, I'm trying to go past him. You see, I've come out to go round him and come back in again. No, he's put his foot down. Bloody idiot. Right? So and then I put my foot down a bit more. No, and he's put his foot down a bit more. I thought, oh, do me a favour. Now I've got a two and a half litre. So I then floored it. Whoosh! <laughs> and there he is in my rear view mirror with his one headlight on because the other one smashed. Probably an illegal Uber driver or something like that. They're on the news today, aren't they? I heard something um, on the news uh, this morning about seven o'clock this morning. I was in the car at seven o'clock this morning. I'm coming to that. Don't worry, I'm coming to that. Um, so there we are. So I zoomed past him and then pulled back in again. And of course I watched it. And then, then, he, then he pulls back in because he knows he can't beat me then. <laughs> Trash, dear. Trash. That's what they are. And I pulled back in, went back to 50 mile an hour. Of course, later on, I see him. He's getting closer and closer. And then he comes along beside me, keeps at the same level as me. I don't even look at him. And off he goes. Off he goes. But it doesn't matter. Proved my point. I've got the faster car. Thank you very much. Two and a half litre. Yes. Don't muck about with me, young man. Um, so nice journey home. Uh, had something to eat. I had uh, baked beans on corn steaks. Uh, went to bed. And I'm watching another film now. Um, can't remember. Uh, Tom Hanks is in it. And he's in charge of a prison on death row. Can't remember the film. Is in charge of some prisoners on death row. Tom Hanks, as I say. Oh, gosh. What's it called now? Is it the, the Nine Mile? Uh, hang on a minute. Let me see. Tom Hanks. The Green Mile? Is it the Green? I think it's the Green Mile. I'm sure it's called the Green Mile, which is quite good. I'm about uh, a third of the way through that at the moment. Watch that. Went to bed. Now, this morning, um, I've got a... I put the bins out last night. I always have to put the bins out Monday. Uh, one week... It's every two weeks. On one week, they take away our household rubbish, you know, um, old mm, bits of fruit and vegetables and... Plastic wrappers, that sort of thing. And on the other week is our recycle week where they take away the tin cans, the cardboard and grass cuttings and things like that. So that's this week. So I was able to get rid of the last lot of newspapers. Um, as you remember, I lost my cat. Do you know, it's two weeks ago today. Two weeks ago, I had to have my cat uh, down a vet and uh, off she went to sleep. Uh, poor little thing. Um, and I've got her back now. I don't know if I told you. I have got her back now. She she come in a little box. Um, bless her. Uh, her ashes and shit. I've, I've put her in the kitchen on the little stool that she used to sleep on. And she's just in that kitchen at the moment, waiting to be taken uh, to uh, my mum's grave, where well, I'll, I'll mix her in with the with the earth there and put some nice plants and things like that in there. Uh, anyway, I, I used to have to go and nick newspapers for her. <laughs> because when she was um she she'd become incontinent for some months as you as you well know if you're a regular viewer to the show you'll know that uh, uh i kept her going for quite some months it's got to be about six six or seven months but i had to keep nicking newspapers from up the station <laughs> metros and uh maureen camden uh, maureen kindly enough uh used to bring me in camden camden news or something like that but it was a bit thin that paper actually it was only about five sheets in there dear you had to put three or four copies of the whole paper down to soak up the wee. <laughs> ah, well, so I had a load of newspapers left over. So I got rid of most of them last time and I managed to get rid of the uh, rest of them this morning. I'm just waiting for the bin man to come this morning. Uh, I got up this morning at 6.30, 6.30 a.m. Because I had to take my mate down to the hospital. He's um, He's got a bad back and bad legs. There's all sorts of things wrong with him. Which um, I usually sit there and take the mick out of him, to be honest. You know, because that's how we deal with things. We don't deal with them. Oh, 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 I'm really not well. Oh, we. That's not how me and my mate usually deal with stuff. We turn it into a joke. 
And if it's not me doing it, it's an him doing it. If you want to sit there, you know, in on your crutches or in your wheelchair, feeling sorry for yourself all day long, that's entirely up to you. We, we both got little things wrong with us, little things. We turn it into a joke. That's what we try and do. Be positive and happy at all times, you know. Oh, 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 not like these people now. Oh, 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 got sore throat. Oh, I got sore throat. Oh, I can't come out tonight. Got sore throat. Got sore throat. Oh, I've got cut on my finger. Can't come to work. Hello, I've cut my finger. I cut. That's pathetic. Pathetic. I mean, I've known some wonderful, wonderful people who are not with us anymore, who had things like cancers and terrible, terrible things like that. And they turned the whole thing onto a joke on Facebook. They turned it on, they told their stories and all that business and, and hilariousness. And then right at the end, you know, they say, well, this is my last post today. And then and then they're gone. And I think for me, that is the way to deal with something like that. you got to be happy and, and upbeat. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Probably even harder with depression. I don't know how you would do it with depression, to be honest. Uh, but a lot of people, you know, you see on the telly, um, take Robin Robin Williams. Robin Williams. Now, what could he possibly want for? All that fame, friends, money, and he killed himself due to depression. Depression, you never know. You never know. I've had depression. Not at the moment. Not at the moment. I had depression or for a long, long time. And you would never know, would you? There are a lot of people out there sometimes, I think, uh, certainly here who thought, ah, ah, yes, Chris, but I know you. You know, they might send you a little message. Ah, yes, but I know you. No, you don't. You know the bit of me that I want you to see. That's what this is. It's a show. Yeah? It's the same for everyone. We, we try and show people the bits that perhaps we want them to see. And certainly uh, when I'm perhaps doing a karaoke or something like that, I'm in my mind is I'm trying to do what I think you want to see. That that's that's how it is. And that's with all actors, actresses, people on the telly, all that. It's not necessarily what you're seeing is exactly what they're like. A lot of what you see from me is exactly what I like, but there are bits that perhaps I'm hiding. Can you open the box? Take the money. Open the box. Take the money. Open the box. Ha <laughs> ha. And it's the same with the, uh, that sort of thing. So I, I don't know how you would deal with this. But certainly I, I have so much respect for people um, with disabilities, illnesses, anything like that, that turn it into a joke. They turn it into a joke. And good on them. Good on them. If it, if it makes them not think of it for a while, then I think that's that's highly commendable, don't you? Uh, there's a phone line. If you want to call in at any point this morning, boys and girls, feel free to do so. 020 3477 There's a Skype in as well. If you've got Skype, you can Skype in. The Skype in name is United Kingdom Talk. Skype in name, United Kingdom Talk. So up at 6.30, took Ron into the hospital. Um which is actually literally five minutes down the road, Heatherwood Hospital, uh, which is just up in Ascot. Um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, a, uh, it's only a small place. There's no accident in emergency there. And when you drive around it, there's a lot of closed buildings. And you get, I, I think, I think probably at some point they'll just close it. I can see that happening. Or uh, we've got a little... Um, What's it called now? Is it a health centre or something like that? We've we've got something in Bracknell, like uh what do they call it now? Um a medical hang on, that's Brant I think it's Brant's Bridge. Brant's Bridge Doctor. Let's see what comes up. What do I call it? An urgent care centre. So we've we've got one of those in Bracknell. And there you can have, so I don't know if you can actually just turn up there, but they can do, they do chemotherapy in there. They do physiotherapy in there and all sorts of other little bits and pieces. So that's, that's actually very close to us. The Heatherwood Hospital, which is where I stayed when I was recovering from my burst appendix. That was in 19, 
gosh, that must be 20 years ago now. But um, and it's in lovely grounds. Oh, it's beautiful. You're just surrounded by trees and grass. Rabbits come out in the morning. Because they want you up at six, don't they? Oh, dear. Six o'clock in the morning, they want you up in the hospital. And you, you, I used to, we'd have breakfast. And then I'd go and sit outside. And um, at six in the morning, the little rabbits were still running around. We could see for the winners. Of course, as soon as you go outside, you know, they, they scarp. They probably think you're going to eat them. <laughs> Adam says, Chris, Apple Music is free for three months. Ah, uh, yeah, but then, then you have to pay for it, dear. I'm not paying for Apple Music. I've got Spotify, four ninety nine. Although I don't think that works on the mobile. Um, I've got Spotify on uh, on the computer, so I can, uh, you know, do that on there. But I think if you want it to play on your mobile, it's extra. Why is it extra? And it's I pay four pound ninety nine a month for Spotify. I've only got that really because while I was DJing, but I don't really need that anymore because I'm not DJing anymore. I'm just doing the, uh, mainly doing the karaoke and the uh, quiz nights, aren't I? Hmm. Okay. Uh, good morning to Shania. I was so glad to give up the DJ and I really was. I'd had enough of it. Oh, God, it was so boring. One song after another being put on. It's so boring. Oh. So, dropped my mate off uh, and um, then I went swimming. I was in the swimming pool at like uh, up past seven because I picked him up from his house at ten past seven. Dropped him, uh, dropped him at the hospital, came back and went swimming straight away. And I walked in. All right, Trevor. Trevor's the bloke who runs the swimming pool. He's a top man at the Hilton Hotel here in Bracknell. He is top man. Anything wrong? You just go and see Trevor. And now and again, he does little favours for you. That is good customer service. He's not a money grabber. And so many people are, aren't they? We don't like money grabbers. We like people that give a bit more. And he certainly goes the extra mile, Trevor, up at the swimming pool. So I said, yeah, I'll just drop my mate off at the hospital. I said, is it busy? He said, oh, you'll be all right now. Get get, get in straight away because at eight o'clock the children come down, you know, who are on holiday. Because we've got a Lego land here. And what happens? A lot of people stay at the Hilton Hotel. It's not posh. Although the prices are a bit posh. It's not posh. It's not like the Hilton in London. Nothing like it. It's all right. It's clean. But it's, I don't know, it's just a little bit more than a travel lodge, I would say. I'm sorry to say that. Or a Premier Inn. And there's nothing wrong with a Premier Inn or travel lodges rooms. They're, they're spotless, aren't they? Have you been to one recently? Comfortable beds and all that's lovely. But I think the Hilton's like £100 a night. Oh, it's Bracknell, not blooming London. <laughs> I've got actually I've got something for you to do in hotels in a minute because this week I'll come on to that in a minute. I'll come on to that in a minute. Uh, uh, so I've come back here. I had my shower. There was one bloke in the pool, go, pool going up and down and I jumped in with him. and I done, done my lengths. I've come back in here, uh, made my tea, come straight upstairs, switched on the computer to talk to you for a little while. I hope that's all right. I hope I interfered with your day too much this morning. All right. So here we are. Now, um, it's a special week this week. Now, as well as, as well as the uh, Pirate Radio 50th anniversary today, here's something else that you can do. It's Afternoon Tea Week here in the UK. Now, I didn't know this exists, but it does. Hang on a minute. Let me just bring that up. Afternoon Tea Week. Now, I don't know. If you've ever been out for afternoon tea, here we go. Afternoon tea week, the 14th of August, 2007. Um, and it says, sometimes the wait for dinner is far too long and lunch passed too many hours ago. And the length of the day is starting to wear at you. When this happens, it's time to settle in with a warm cup of tea and some light sandwiches. Take some time to appreciate the day and bolster yourself for the rest of the evening. Afternoon Tea Week taps in to the British tradition. Land of hope and glory of afternoon tea. Afternoon Tea Week taps into the British tradition of afternoon tea to help bring a bit of elegance and pomp to an otherwise unremarkable time of day. Now, you just can't see this happening in France or Italy or America or Australia or India or China. This is very, very British. And they're having a whole tea. This, is, this has been going on for a while. I never knew this existed. <clears throat> 
The history afternoon tea week was established to help secure a tradition that has graced British afternoons since the 1840s. In those days, dinner often wasn't served until after 8pm and lunch wasn't actually a thing. So what was the hungry person supposed to do? Create a new mini meal in the middle of the day, of course. Traditionally, this meal consists of tiny finger sandwiches, scones with... J it's scones. No, it's not scones. No, it's not. It's scones. 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 Create a new mini meal in the middle of, of course, uh, tiny finger sandwiches, scones with jam and clotted cream and sweet dainties like cakes and pastries to help lift the spirits, bolster energy and see you through the rest of the day. The simple afternoon meal grew into a social event, especially for those who spent their lives in the upper eclans of the day society. This became even more prominent once Queen Victoria herself took part in this tradition. At that point, the concept of tea reception was born, lavish and fancy afternoon repasts that could host anywhere from a close collection of friends to a couple of hundred of society's most important um, uh, things. And uh, how to celebrate Afternoon Tea Week, which, which we're now in for the next whole week, OK? Celebrating Afternoon Tea Week is simple. For the length of a week, make a pause for Afternoon Tea part of your day. Warm tea, a few sweets, a small repast will help lift your spirits and drive you through the rest of your day. Now, you can, of course, do this yourself. There's nothing wrong with getting a few cakes, maybe making them yourselves, or just buying them. Go to the shop. Get yourself some of those little French fancies, or scones, or little... What are those little bakewell slices with the icing on top? Oh, God. God knows how many Slimmer's World sins are in these. But never mind. We don't worry about that too much at the moment. OK? Or you can go out and have afternoon tea. Good morning to Ray B. Hello, Ray. It was nice to see you at the weekend. He's just woke up. Really? God's sake. Can you have coffee? Not really, Ray. Come on, it's afternoon tea. If you want go and coffee, get on a plane and go to America, dear. British afternoon tea. If you don't want to do it yourself, you can go out. Usually to a hotel, somewhere like that. Now, I've had afternoon tea in two places. I've had at Coworth Park, Coworth Park, which is um, in Ascot. And it's beautiful there. Oh, my God, you, you've you never seen grounds like it. And if you go at the moment, the meadow will be in full bloom. I went last year twice, once with my aunt and once with my mate Ron. And we did make a couple of videos last year, so you might want to have a look at those. You're, you're, the, the, the easiest place to find the older videos is not on Facebook. You'll just spend ages going backwards and backwards. Go on to YouTube. I'll look now. Look, let me have a look for you now. See if I can find it. Go on to YouTube. If you type in United Kingdom Talk and a subject, then if I've talked about it, it should come up. United Kingdom Talk, Coworth Park. Let's have a look. There it is, straight away. Straight away. So I went in September last year. And uh, if you type in United Kingdom Talk, Friday the 2nd of September 2016, you'll find that's one of them. I, I actually did two. Um, where's the other one? That, is that the other one? No, that's not the other one there. Uh, that's just at Coworth Park, um, September. Sep, sep. See if I can find the other one as well. Oh, I don't know where the other one is. The The other one is about a week after the first one, though. I know that. So if you type in United Kingdom Talk Friday the 2nd of September 2016, you'll, you'll see that one there, which I did with uh, with my auntie Brenda. OK. Uh, Ray says you can have coffee in Morrison's. Um, well, of course, I'm sure you can have afternoon tea there as well. But if you want something very special, 
You can go out to a hotel or something like that. As I say, Coworth Park in Ascot is beautiful. Massive grounds. After you've had your afternoon tea, you can go for a walk. They've got like little ponds and flowers and roses and there's horses and horse riding and big fields. You can have a little look at the hotel as well. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful there. And I've also had afternoon tea twice in Fortnum and Mason's. Once with my good friend uh, Wayne, who works and lives in central London. And also with my mate Ron as well. We went to uh, afternoon tea in Fortnum and Mason's, which was, was quite nice. Uh, and there you are in central London and, and it's up, it's right at the top. And you look out onto all the shops and there, comfortable seats and nice armchairs and things like that. And it's a lovely experience. It can be expensive can be expensive. You could be £35 each. That's for just a few sandwiches and tea. That's all you're getting, you know, and cakes. The sandwiches keep coming. If you want more, they just bring more. I should blooming well think so too for 35 quid. Or you can do it a bit cheaper. There's plenty of cheaper places to do it. Now, I've discovered a website, afternoontea.co.uk. Afternoontea.co.uk. And on there is all sorts of places you can go and have your afternoon tea and all different prices as well. Now, for example, at Muse of Mayfair, which looks quite nice, from £27.37, which is not bad at all, is it? Let's have a little look. Uh, there's one at the Dalloway Terrace, 25% off, £26.25. Wedgwood afternoon tea with a complimentary glass of champagne is at the Langham Hotel. Now, that really is at the top of the tree, isn't it? £49 for that one. But remember, you're getting your glass of champagne there as well. Uh, Fortnum and Mason are doing it. Afternoon tea service, £44. Again, on the pricier side. Uh, or you can go a little bit cheaper. The Marleybone Hotel, do it for £24. And it's, it, it, it's all very similar, what you get for your money. It's where you are that's making the price difference. This one looks good at the Sanderson. £40 a person, this one. So, again, uh, a little bit more expensive. Mad Hatter's Tea Party and a cocktail at the Sanderson. So, again, you're getting a little bit more there. You want to go cheaper? That's all right. Intercontinental Hotel in London at the O2, £23.25. So there's uh, stuff to suit everyone there. And if you're coming to London, oh, that's a lovely one. Let's look at this one. Hanbury Manor in Hertfordshire. Now, that's a beautiful building, like very castle-like. You know what I mean? £30 there. If you come out of London a bit, you'll probably get it cheaper. Now, let's have a look. Uh, South East, where are some of you? Let's, where are some of you? Um, good morning to nephew Jimmy Butler. I hope you're at work. Are you at work, Jimmy? It's a bit late. Don't tell me you've just got up. You should be fixing those cars. My nephew, Jimmy Butler, he's got a business. He repairs cars. Wonderful. He repairs cars. You know, he, he gets the dent fixed and resprays it perfectly you would never know you would never know that my nephew had fixed your car it's that good he's up in lincolnshire there could you have a coffee in the morning no it's afternoon tea dear that's what can you hear it in the title afternoon tea can you have a coffee no you probably could if you asked but it's rude afternoon tea now let me see actually you're in lincoln he asked somewhere to take your girlfriend jimmy afternoon tea Go on, force yourself to spend some money <laughs> on her. <laughs> uh, actually, no, I haven't got one there. Oh, South East, that says regions. Let's see if I've got anything in Lincolnshire. Uh, what are you, North East, aren't you? Are you North East or Yorkshire? Newcastle, Northumberland, Tyne and Weir. No, not North East. Um, you must be Yorkshire and Humber. Yorkshire, Leeds, there's nothing. <laughs> oh, well, it'll have to be McDonald's, mate. It's going to have to be McDonald's, and it regions. Surely you're, you're. Are you East Midlands? You're not East Midlands, are you? Oh, you are. Okay. Lincolnshire, okay. Lincolnshire, let's have a look. Oh, it's only 15 quid there. 15 quid. Uh, Bel Belton Woods, 20 pounds a person. There you go. Take her there. Oh, no, hang on a minute. No, Jimmy, Jimmy, here we go. The Petwood Hotel, £12.50. 
There you go. Take her there. Let's have a look. Details. It's only around the corner from Minefi, where Minefi was. Afternoon tea. Uh, you've got to go in and book it there or by phone. You can't do it on the website. Uh, details. Afternoon tea, 2.30 to 5.30, Monday to Saturday. Um, let's have a look. Yeah. Saturday, 3 till 5.30. So there you go. Go and have some afternoon tea. You're going to have the little posh sandwiches and all that, Jimmy. That'll impress, that'll impress her. Eh? For her birthday. She doesn't need to know. £12.50. Good luck. Come on. For God's sake. I've paid £35 for that, Jimmy. Dear me. All right. There's an idea for your afternoon tea, boys and girls. Okay. Uh, any news stories today? Anyone else want to fall, phone in? Oh, no one phoned in today. So we'll close the phone line now. And we'll disappear in a moment. Uh, what, have I got a story here for you? Yes. One little story for you today, boys and girls. Uh, shock horror. People are doing it on the train. Doing it. <clears throat> on the on the train, rather. Police, this is in this morning's Super Soraway Sun. Police have launched an investigation amid claims a couple were doing it. <clears throat> on a Gatwick Express train. I mean, what is wrong with people? No self-control. I mean, you could at least go into the toilet, for God's sake. The couple are alleged to have engaged in activity on the 9pm service from London, Victoria to Gatwick Airport last Thursday. <laughs> Cops are appealing for witnesses to come forward after the incident was reported around half an hour later. So that means, oh, so these perverts... Not, not for people doing it. The perverts watching them waited for half an hour. Dirty people. I mean, what is wrong with people, for God's sake? They watched it for half an hour before they reported it. <laughs> is there a video for me to log on to? No, perhaps not. <laughs> terrible, terrible people. All righty, gang. Uh, that's it for the show today. We're going to do today's birthdays. Don't forget, tonight... Ah, oh, Tracy Clifford's there as well. My knees take for cover. Tonight is karaoke at Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross, OK? Karaoke tonight at Wharfdale Road in King's Cross. Uh, starts at 8 o'clock, finishes at 11.30, and it's cheap drinks on a Monday. All right? Monday night karaoke at Central Station, Wharfdale Road, King's Cross, 8 till 11.30, and cheap drinks as well on this Monday night and every Monday. Right, today's birthday is then. Uh, uh, Mike Dower. Happy birthday, Mike. He's another one who gave up the DJing a little while ago. Mike was big time club DJ. After me. I, I was first. I was first. I was big time club DJ before Mike. And then he was big, big time club DJ. Mike worked here for quite a number of years, actually. He's given it up as well now. So a few of us given up. We've all had enough, I think. I think we've all had enough. <laughs> Never mind. Kieran Knight. Who's into films, aren't you, Kieran? Happy birthday, Kieran. I won't see you at the Two Brewers anymore. I'm afraid I left there a few weeks ago. So uh, maybe somewhere else. Happy birthday, Kieran. Happy birthday to uh, Stefan Reese, who used to come along to the karaoke at the Cherry Tree when we were there in Dulwich a little while ago. Happy birthday, Stephen. Jodie Griffin's birthday today. Happy birthday, Jodie, to you. All right. Uh, Andrew Malone, oh, my good friend Andrew Malone, 46 years old today. You don't look it, Andrew. Same as me. Same as me. I seem to look younger since I lost the weight. Another Slimming World way in tomorrow. It's all very exciting. Oh, there was one more story I wanted to read you. Uh, I'm going to do it. To I'll do it on tomorrow's show. I'll do it tomorrow's show now, OK? I must remember to, to print that off. That's a very, very funny story. I'll save up for tomorrow. Happy birthday, Andrew. Uh, Sasha Smith is 29 years old today. Happy birthday, Sasha. Jason Benny. Happy birthday, Jason. Uh, Carl Clinton, 30 years old today, Carl, aren't you? Uh, little Scotty, 29. I can't believe you're 29, Scotty. You still look like you're 18 years old. All right. Happy birthday, little Scotty. Peter Zane Ryo Oki. Happy birthday. And Julian Little, happy birthday, Julian. And Ushia Santos. Ushia Santos, who I worked with at Belushi's, both in Hammersmith and Fulham. Uh, she's a bit of a rock goddess, aren't you? A rock goddess. That's exactly what a punk rock goddess. Happy birthday, Ushia. And uh, shall I sing a song? <laughs> Uh, 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, boys and girls. Enjoy your birthday. It's a wonderful day out there. Uh, on this Monday, I'm going to go and cut the grass now and have another cup of tea and start my lunch. I know it's a bit early for lunch, but I was up early today, as I say, uh, 6.30, taking my mate into the hospital. So I'm starting to get hungry now because I had breakfast at like 7 o'clock in the morning. So but I've, and I've got, I'm, I must have afternoon tea again soon. We will have to go to afternoon tea again soon. Have a lovely day and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for joining me. Cheerio now.